Hello and uh, welcome back. We are currently done with the uh, gaming and um, we're going to take a little break from that. We're going to start talking about some of the things that is really important and um, knowing the scriptures is extremely important because if we don't know the scriptures, we are sitting ducks for all kinds of attacks which uh, is designed to weaken us one way or another. Weaken our faith, um, take away from um, that assurance that we all need to have that we are going to heaven. Now, think about it. If you were to die as of right now, are you absolutely sure that you are going to heaven? And how can you be absolutely sure? And how would somebody live their life? Let's say that they were absolutely not sure. And they were living in some sort of doubt. How would that make them live their life? At least, if you don't know that you're going to heaven, then death may be something that you are really worried about and anyone that is scared of death is a slave they are a slave because the moment that a threat of death comes into play they surrender and that means that people are willing to fight until it gets to that point and then they surrender that means that everything they did up until that point is almost for nothing so finding that assurance that we are going to heaven and uh, heaven is our home is what dr jack lord spent 60 years of his life trying to work a solution to he understood that the kingdom of darkness is constantly challenging our faith because we're all judged by our faith and what we believe is actually what we experience um, Dr. Jack Lord, he uh, made it to become a hundred years old. And uh, this is a springboard to biblical understanding. Jack Lord was a pastor, and he is born in 1923. Already as a young man, Jesus found him, and he had a calling that he answered, and he went off to Bible college as a very young man. And he never stopped pursuing the simplicity of Christ that he had discovered when he first got saved. Now, as time progressed, he learned more and more. He got more and more... Um, diplomas and more and more achievements and he was sought after throughout the entire nation of america but he was serving the lord faithfully and what he set out to do he continued working on and he ended up with this 14 lessons springboard to biblical understanding he called it and before we look at this first lesson let us just check ourselves and see where we stand when it comes to our belief systems you see jack lord he spent a lot of time together with different kinds of believers and he quickly found that it was the same elements that created doubt in the mind of many of his brothers and sisters no matter where they were and no matter what their story were the tactics of the devil appear to be the same, and they attack the same foundation again and again and again. The foundation that we are going to look at today is, are you really saved? Are you really going to heaven? Can you be absolutely assured of this? The Bible says that heaven will be given us a reward, a crown or a prize as a result of what? Believing? Doing good? Or both I'm not gonna give you the answer to the question you just think it over in your mind 
Let's move on to the next one. It says, The Bible says that heaven will be given as a reward, crown, or prize to some people, all people, some Christians, all Christians, nobody, or none of the above. Now, I would, uh, I would make an educated guess that some people may say both because, yeah, it seems logical. Well, the Bible doesn't teach us that. It talks about the works of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then it talks about our faith. So our faith is what brings us eternal life. So we will see in this lesson that believing is the key to everything. So then the second question is a trick question, isn't it? So who does the Bible say that heaven is given as a reward to? Well, we just established up here that it's the believing ones. And all of these alternatives down here may seem good. But there is none of these that says anything about believing. So the correct answer is none of the above. You would think that maybe some Christians or all Christians. Well, then you need to remember that the word Christian first appeared in Antioch when the apostles and the believers got labeled by the non-believers and they said, oh, those people are Christians. So it wasn't themselves calling themselves Christians. It was other people calling them by that label. Now let's uh, scroll down a little bit here and see where it all begins. We are looking at the Christian life. So what is the Christian life? The Christian life is that life that the believer lives, which makes them stand out and separate themselves from others. It's an interesting thing. Some people likes to be different. They will try to do anything they can to stand out. But the way it actually works, and we will see this also from Scripture, that the Christian life is something that happens from within, and it is not something that we do ourselves. It is just something that changes. It's almost like our taste buds is changed. The stuff that we didn't like in the past all of a sudden tastes pretty good, and the stuff that we used to love in the past no longer tastes so good. And there's nothing we did. It's just changed. And we are looking at the question, is heaven your home? Now, the late Billy Graham, he is, uh, you know, he has been reported to have said that the most important place to be able to find the truth and to seek God is in our churches. But still, their churches is full of people that is going to church every Sunday hoping that they will find the assurance that they need so that they will be absolutely sure that they're going to heaven. Some people have been going to church for many years and they still don't have that assurance. The purpose of this lesson today is to bring you into the assurance that you have eternal life and that heaven is your home. It can also be to reassure you because you were already assured. Or it can be a part enabling you to be able to assure somebody else that is in doubt. Either way, that is the goal of today's lesson, to bring you into assurance. We go to question one. It says, can anyone be sure of going to heaven? And what word in 1 John 5.13 shows that we can or cannot be sure? 
I have already found the verse in question. You probably see it all the way up top. So there you have it. It reads, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So the question is here, how can anyone be sure of going to heaven? Well, there is this word right here. It says, no. It says, no. So this was written so that we can know. Isn't that something? <clears throat> so the word we're looking for is no. This verse was written so that we can know that we have eternal life. And how, how can we know that? If we believe on the name of the Son of God and we know the name, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Question two, how can we be sure? Well, first, we need to understand our condition. If we look at Romans 3, verse 10, it says here, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. That's pretty, um, pretty harsh right there. But it, that's what it says. It says it right here. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Then, if we uh, quickly go and look at Jeremiah 17, verse 9, we can say that it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So, our condition is that we are deceitful, desperately wicked, and we're all sinners. We all come short of the glory of God. We are unrighteous. So, Paul says in, in, in one verse that in me there is no good thing. Even our heart that we thought were so good, apparently isn't and that is the human condition and with that as a basis we cannot spend time with god that is holy okay so that separates us from god and that is a very sad thing because god loves us and he would like us to unite with him we therefore deserve what according to romans Chapter 6, verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what is it that we deserve according to Scripture with our sinful nature? It says right here, death. Now, is this true for some people, for most people, or for everyone? Let's take a look at what Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says about that. <clears throat> it says here, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So apparently this is true for all people. Every single person without exception has sinned, and there is no exception to that, so we're all in the same boat. So if we have received that which we deserved, all of us will be punished in hell for our sins. Therefore, we must understand that Christ took this punishment for our sins. Let's take a look at John 3.16, the famous verse. 
For whom did Christ die? It says here, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So whom did Christ die for? He died for all of those that believe. So what did he accomplish by dying on the cross? He must have accomplished two things. And we are going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. And it reads, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So what did he accomplish on the cross? Well, first thing, he became the sin that we had committed. So he took upon himself all of the sin. Then he took the righteousness that he had as the Son of God, and he put it onto you and to me, so that he, in fact, changed places with us. And he took that punishment that we are destined or were, were destined to get because we were sinners. So then we must depend on what he did for us. Let's look at John 3.36. What must we do in order to be saved? What must we do? It says here, and John 3.36 is spoken out of the mouth of John the Baptist. John 3.16 that we just read a moment ago was spoken out of the lips of the Lord himself. So, for those people that didn't quite get it the first time, listen to what it says. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So, what must we do? We must believe. We must believe that the Son of God died, taken our sins, and was buried and rose again showing that there is acceptance beyond the grave in heaven for him and for us. You see, if you believe the what, then you know that you have everlasting life. Hmm, interesting. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 10. It says here that he that believeth on the Son of God hath a witness in himself, and he that believeth not hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Let's just mark this verse with a little red square as of right now. And let us point out that word, record. Do you see that? Now, if you believe the record that God gave of his son, you have everlasting life. Now, what is the record that God gave of his son? Well, that's the next verse. So then we go to verse 11 and we read, And this is the record. That God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Now, that is the record that God gave of his Son. And anyone that believes this has eternal life. Now, if you have eternal life, could you go to hell? Why or why not? Well, because life and hell does mix. Because hell is not life. That is separation from God completely. So anyone that has eternal life is not going to hell and cannot go to hell. It is written in stone because it says right here that the God that cannot lie is promising eternal life to everyone that believes in the record that he gave of his son. Now, let's make it personal. Do you 
believe that Christ took all of your punishment? Yes? Then what punishment is left for you? None. So if there is none, is there any reason for you to be punished whatsoever? No. So if you're not going to receive any punishment in hell, now where is the only other place you could go when you die? It's heaven. So then, could a person really believe on Christ and miss heaven? Not according to John the Baptist. Not according, according to the record that God gave of his son. Not according to the words that were spoken out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And not according to the beloved disciple John. And not according to our apostle Paul. So now we're starting to accumulate a lot of witnesses that is making the proclamation that because you believe, you have eternal life. And that eternal life is in Christ. Now, if you do not know whether you are going to heaven, then obviously you are not depending on what he did to keep you out of hell. And I'm making a red frame around that because I want you to take a look at that particular um, sentence and wrap your mind around it. And please do memorize this because this is very important. If you do not know or if you're in doubt whether or not you are going to heaven, then Obviously, you are not depending on what he, Jesus Christ, did to keep you out of hell. Then you are relying upon yourself. And we know that no one of us is able to keep ourselves out of hell, right? So if you have doubt around your salvation when you're putting your trust in yourself, you're right. Put your trust in Jesus, right? So if you're going to heaven, then you are saved from going to hell. You, therefore have salvation you have new life you are born again you are a true believer and we say that you are of royal blood you are in the kingdom of the king of kings and he has recruited you a king or a queen into his kingdom put this verse on your mind john three thirty six spoken out of the mouth of John the Baptist, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And ask yourself, do you believe on the Son? Well, those that believe not on the Son, the wrath of God abides upon them. But you, my friend, you believe in the Son, so you have eternal life. And we give thanks unto the Lord for this unspeakable gift. Now, as a child of God, as born again, as part of the royal family, as having truth blood in your veins, we would like to invite you to come join us in the barn. And uh, I will post some information in the chat um, that is going to come up on the screen soon um, to the information that you need in order to be able to get onto a Discord server. Now, why would we ever make a Discord server? The reason for that is pretty simple. We needed a place where we could get together and congregate. And um, we do not trust that all of these uh, social medias that we are accustomed to today, that they will last. Uh, there has been situations in the past when you put your trust on, on others, where you find that their services may go down or you may be shut out or you may not have the liberty to speak freely or whatever. So we decided that opening up um, a server where we could unite and speak the way that we speak and, and do the things that we do together without having to worry so much uh, about how we are being perceived and so forth. 
well the lord the lord made it possible and so far it has been very fruitful we have had a lot of interesting brothers and sisters coming to uh the server we call it the barn and uh sharing their testimonies and uh it turns out that the lord has people all over the world but in this day and time it's so easy for each and every one of us to feel alone but let me tell you you're not alone you're in a fellowship with many and even though there's a lot of cancer in the body of christ those of us that knows what's going on we are here and we are looking to unite and we know that time is short we know that the lord is right around the corner and we have one job that is to stay joyful stay happy exhort and motivate one another and remind each other of the good things that we have in store because you know we cannot even fathom what we have in store those that love god wow we have something coming we will be back in a little bit we're gonna show you uh, a little commercial break where we um focus on that which matters and uh, it's not a sales pitch it's not a it's not a commercial for you to buy anything it's actually a commercial that reaches in to the bottom of your heart and simply reminds you of that which you already know and uh the more people that gets brought into remembrance of that which we already know the better so let us unite in the body of christ god bless you Hope this uh, lesson was of advantage to you. This has been a pleasure on our part. We will be back soon. Watch out.